Hello guys and welcome. Today I have something I'm really excited about and this is 8-bit computing. Usually I spend my time with 886 compatible PCs and I could already gain quite a lot of knowledge about that platform. However, I have almost no experience with 8-bit computers and this topic made me curious quite a lot of time in the past. So I decided to close my knowledge gap and finally get my hands on it. And today I would like to proudly present to you this probably broken C64. And this is officially my first own 8-bit personal computer ever. As I was a child, I had no access to computers like Commodore, Amiga or Atari. I just could access something like this or this. Don't get me wrong, this technology is also really exciting. However, my first personal PC was 886 based, so I missed the 8-bit era completely. And this is the reason, and I hope you understand that, why I have really no idea where to start with it. Fortunately, we have internet today where you can find answer for almost any question. Anyway, I got this C64 from eBay and uh, probably it is broken. However, it is so dirty that I don't even want to touch it. It seemed to be covered with kind of oily film and it has to be cleaned before... I will start to do anything with it. Furthermore, um, let's say I decided to make my homework properly. And so I went even farther back into time and came back with this. This is a uh, Commodore VIC-20, which was the predecessor of uh, C64. This amazing piece of history has only 5 kilobytes of RAM. And just imagine, C64 had 13 times more memory. Anyway, both computers are important parts of the hardware history and I would like to learn more about both of them. So first of all, I will have to test if they're working at all. Luckily, both computers use the same type of power supply and I have one here. However, I um, have already a problem with the video output. These old computers used to be connected to the television, nor do I have one here, neither the cable which I need to connect it to. The good thing is that because of the partial compatibility, and if I use a composite output, I can use the same cable for both computers. First, let's take a look at the schematics of the video connector. There are two types of different connectors, and they've been used for different types of Commodore PCs. VIC-20, C64, C128, or PLUS4. Beginning with C64, the connector was more sophisticated, because beside composite output, it also supported the S-video output. However, VIC-20 didn't have had this uh, more sophisticated video output and was just limited to composite output. I'm going to build the composite cable myself, which will fit both computers. So what will I need? A 5-pin DIN plug and an old composite video and audio cable. Luckily, I have a full box of such old cables. I will just cut off the composite plugs from one side and replace them by a DIN connector. The video signal goes on pin 4 and the audio on pin 3. Since uh, Commodore supports only mono sound, the right and left channel can be twisted together. The common ground goes on pin 2. And if you do it yourself, please don't forget the polarity. The picture you can see is a view on the port. So like as if you would look on the holes. Okay, the cable is done now and uh, is ready for testing. But before we power up one of the computers, we have to test the power supply. The power supply I have here is also known under the name the Commodore Killer. A lot of people say that it shouldn't be used anymore. The problem with this is that it can give too high voltage to the computer and literally burn it. However, this is the only one power supply I have currently. And maybe one day I will create another one, but now I am going to use this. And before I give it a try, I will test that the voltage is in the given limits. The fuse seems to be okay. Here we should have a 9 volt AC. I think 10 volt without load is okay. And here we should have 5 volt DC and I think 5.1 without the load is also okay. And the next problem, as I told before, is that I have no television here. So I will use this um, USB capture device 
which can accept composite and its video input, and try to connect everything to my notebook. Finally, we prepared everything for the first run. First, let's connect the C64. And as expected, unfortunately, this part seems to be completely dead. I can see some kind of signal coming, but then nothing else. Okay, we will have to investigate this later. Now let's see if the other one is working. Okay, VIC-20 is connected and is ready to be turned on. And at least some video signal is coming. Oh, yes! Looks like it works. Okay, I have no input. Oh, it's... Oh. The, the input is lagging. Okay, but I think it could be due to the USB capture device because the buffer is too high. But anyway, it looks like it is kind of working at least. As you can see, I can type the commands, but the image quality is also not quite good. I think I still will have to test it on the real TV just to be sure that it is not because of the USB capture device. And here we go, I found a TV where I can connect the computer to. As you can see, this is our VIC-20 and it is connected from the same cable and uh, I have no input lag anymore, so I think that was due to the USB capture device. However, the picture quality is still quite bad have a lot of vertical lines and kind of distortion on the edges as you can see. So I think I will have to investigate where this is coming from. Now talking about the investigation, let's take a brief look into the Commodore 64 first. And I already can see that the old plastic is broken and the old holders are not there anymore, so the back part of the housing is not holding. I will have to fix this somehow. In comparison to the housing, the mainboard looks quite clean and uh, somebody has been working here already. Somebody made kind of handle on the sound chip called SID. It's probably been made to be able to pull the chip out of the mainboard a little bit easier. However, as far as I read, this chip can be quite hot, so I don't think this was a good idea at all. Under the RF shield near the VIC-2 chip, which is uh, responsible for video output as far as I know, everything looks clean either. I don't see any burnt parts or something. The fuse also looks good, however we wouldn't see any video signal if it would be broken. Somebody made his uh, custom modification here, as far as you can see, there are holes in the case and um, I think this is a kind of reset button. So at the first glance I can't see what is wrong with this mainboard. I think I will have to take a closer look at it at one point to investigate what is going wrong here. And now, last but not least, let's take a look on the VIC-20. The RF shield looks a little bit dusty, but the main board looks quite clean and untouched. There are quite some capacitors near the VIC chip, the video chip. I could try to replace them to improve the video quality. However, cleaning these machines and investigating the issues will be a topic for another video. So far, I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you next time. Goodbye.